who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Uh, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. A very uh, encouraging um, scripture, very um, inspiring and also uh, enabling you know, uh, words that we see here. But Paul is asking that question, who shall separate us? You know, who is he who condemns? Who shall separate us from the love of God? And then he makes that declaration. You know, he, he says, okay, uh, shall tribulation, you know, will any of these things separate us from the love of God? You know, tribulation, persecution, uh, danger, nakedness, peril, um, uh, and sword meaning any violent act towards us you know shall will it separate us from the love of god and then he goes on to declare very triumphantly yet in all these things we are more than conquerors not by our own selves he says through him who loved us and um, and then in the verses following he says you know these things cannot separate us neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. None of these things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So he's talking about the agape love of God extended to us, expressed to us through Christ, our Lord. And he says, you know, we will not be separated from him through any of these things. But the only thing is this, you know, the one, one thing that can actually separate us from the love of God is, uh, is we ourselves. You know, the one person or one, if you want to say, you know, who can separate us? It is it is just we. It is our choice and our decision to walk away from the love of God. Yeah, we can separate us, but none of these created things, none of these, uh, these uh, trials, none of these challenges can actually separate us from the love of God. Because we know all these things, we are more than conquerors, right? So, so let's pray and, um, and let's... Um, this is offer ourselves to the Lord and um, just thank him for his love and thank him for this promise that none of these things, you know, none of these external things that we might experience in life can separate us from the love of God, uh, though they might try to do that. But, um, but we'll be careful to give ourselves to him and, and uh, draw continually towards him and say, God, I don't want to walk away from that love that you have for me. Yeah, let's let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for these words. We thank you for this promise. Uh, we thank you for this declaration that uh, in all these things, Lord, whatever we go through, life's challenges, God, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through you, Christ Jesus. For greater is he that is in me, that is in us, than he that is in the world. We thank you that you indwell us. We thank you that you indwell us with your love, Father God. And we thank you that nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing can separate us from your love, Father God. We thank you for, uh, for, the, for this uh, entire descriptive list, oh God, that nothing that is created, nothing that is spiritual, no principality, no power, no demon can separate us from your love, Father God. It is just we who choose to walk away. And so, Lord, I, I pray that today, Lord, that we will draw near, that we will strengthen, Lord, our, our commitment towards you, God. Even as we are recipients of your amazing love, amazing grace, Lord, may we walk in that, in the fullness of that. May we walk uh, faithful to the call. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, God. Uh, so let's, uh, let's turn to uh, what we... Uh, which we are continuing um, today.
last class we looked at conflicts and uh, i think the last couple of uh, sessions we looked at conflicts and how we need to um, how we can uh, overcome conflicts resolve conflicts conflict we saw that conflicts uh, conflicts are a reality in uh, in life uh, in marriage especially when we're living um, in such close proximity with another person so there is bound to be conflict and we saw you know the reasons the differences uh, physical difference the psychological difference uh, difference in our personality so many things contributing to uh, a conflict right a conflict uh, meaning it could be a sharp argument is it could be a disagreement it could be uh, it could be an intense, uh, maybe even a quarrel, you know. Um, so it is possible to have conflicts. So we should not be afraid. We should not be surprised or startled because of conflicts. Uh, but we should choose to resolve them and resolve in the right way possible. Okay, so uh, we looked at those seven steps and uh, it'll be good for us to, you know, revisit that and see how we can uh, actually Put them in our lives right it's one thing to study it's one thing to go through and say okay it sounds wonderful it sounds good but when it actually happens you realize that it takes a lot out of you uh, and because you need to rely on not lead on lean on him and be led by him because we need his wisdom and we need his you know the spirit of god to just heal us and bring us to that place of wanting to revisit uh, some of those painful things, wanting to talk about some of those painful things, and uh, wanting to settle those things in the best way possible. Now it's going to, um, so it's it's going to take a lot out of us, but uh, it it'll be with the empowering of the Holy Spirit. It's not just us sorting it in isolation, but we are actually we have got the source. We are we are connected to the vine, and uh, and that's the beautiful thing, right? Okay, so today we're looking at chapter eleven. And uh, chapter 11 and 12, I'm just going to just go through a little quickly uh, and then go on to the next one. Uh, we'll see if, if there's time. Okay, so chapter 11 is about overcoming life's challenges, right? Overcoming life's challenges. And uh, so we, we need to understand, just like how we looked at uh, conflicts, we need to understand that, yes, there are challenges that uh, we will... Uh, face in life um, in certain seasons of our lives um, there are challenges that we will face as individuals there are challenges that we will face as uh, as um, as a married couple so these are for everybody you know just because we are believers uh, we believe in the almighty god uh, the creator of heaven and earth you know the sovereign lord uh, that does not mean that we will not face challenges and uh, different kinds of challenges so challenges also, maybe we've lived a very sheltered life, maybe we've led a very, you know, easy life, and uh, I praise God, you know, all the good things that have happened, but we need to understand that, yes, uh, open to the possibility of challenges, difficulties, right? In fact, the Lord Jesus himself promised that these would come. Uh, he promised his presence during the challenges. He promised his peace um, during challenges, right? if you look at John chapter sixteen, okay, and verse um, John chapter sixteen and verse thirty-three, okay, let me um, put that up. Okay, John chapter sixteen and verse thirty-three uh, in the New King James it reads like this: "These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer." He says, but be of good cheer. In this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So he is the overcomer and he has overcome the world. And he, so because he has overcome, he says, be of good cheer. So which means that he has overcome, he has got the victory, and he is extending that victory to us, uh, that overcoming ability to us and that victory to us. Right. Uh, in the Amplified, it, re it reads like this. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you will have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration. But be of good cheer, meaning take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it 
of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. Okay. Another scripture is 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Um, 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, where it uses the word temptation, right? And uh, and which, which in, in the context, it can be um, translated as um, test, right? As test also at or trials. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13 says, um, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Right. So here it's talking about strength. Right. Uh, in the message version, um, message Bible, this is how it reads. No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He will never let you be pushed beyond, pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you come through it. Okay. So. Um, so we see that, um, well, these two scriptures talk about uh, endurance, talk about uh, the fact that, yes, uh, there could be trials and um, tribulations, um, but he has overcome. And the good thing is he gives us that overcoming ability uh, for us to go beyond, for us to go beyond that and overcome, right? So, um, yeah, let's just talk about... Uh, um, these challenges for a minute. Just one second. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when we see that uh, these challenges, the way we face it uh, is very important, right? So we now we have this promise. Now we have these um, uh, this assurance from God that uh, he will enable us to overcome or he has overcome so it depends uh, on how we face these challenges because th challenges can actually make us uh, or hardships can make us very cynical for example you know it can make us cynical in the sense we are we uh, uh, we lose our sense of innocence we lose our sense of um, you know uh, wonder and expectation and uh, we become very very cynical in life we could become very very cynical in life because we face constant hardships we are like okay we almost like given up we're saying okay this is how life is and there's no uh, there's no faith there's no hope there's no expectation right and we, we begin to talk negative and uh, you know put down everything else so we could become cynical we could even we could even become bitter uh, we could become angry with god um, so or we can just completely give up completely check out of life and say okay um, this is it um, i'm just giving up i don't have the strength to carry on i don't have the will to carry on i'm just giving up so just imagine in if in the marriage uh, setting Right in a, in a in a marriage that um, because of these things that you're facing or hardships that we give up right now it's it's not only affecting um, you personally yeah, and whatever you do personally like maybe your work your career ministry uh, but it's also affecting others who are connected to you and especially wife or husband and family um, children. Every everything, every relationship gets affected, uh, affected negatively, right? So, um, so we need to face these challenges with the right perspective. Okay, you know, look at this. Uh, the let's just go through these vows, the wedding vows, okay, that we we may have uh, said. You know, for those of us who are married. You know, this is this is how it uh, how it is. You know, the, the groom places the ring on the bride's finger, and the bride places the ring on the groom's finger, and and oh, wow, so, you know, something like this is normally uh, said to one another. Okay, with this ring, I take you to be my wife slash husband, 
um, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part, according to God's holy word. I give you this ring as a sign of constant faith and abiding love. With my body, I honor you, and all that I am, I give to you. This is my solemn love. Okay, so this is the this is the promise. This is the wow. This is the covenant when we when we make that covenant of marriage. This is what we say to each other. Okay, or you know, as single people, you know, this is what you would say to one another one day. Um, but the thing is this, you know, whenever we say, okay, for richer, we're able to identify, okay, for, or when we say for poorer or for worse or for, um, you know, uh, in sickness, you know, in our minds, it's like, okay, um, you know, that's never going to happen, right? Um, that's never going to happen. Uh, or that's not going to happen to us, right? And we forget that. If at all it happens, when we face those kind of challenges, we face those um, trials, that we, f we sometimes even forget these vows, right? and it begins to affect the marriage, you know, for better or for worse. Now, we say it during the, during the wedding ceremony, and it's, it's nice, it's wonderful, everybody's happy, and, and it's, that's how it should be. Right, you're all rejoicing. You're happy, um, but the reality of what we say uh, is not doesn't really sink in. Right, uh, very few people actually think about that and say yes. I even if this happens, you know, I I, I give you this vow. You know, this this vow, this covenant that I'm making is even during those times, even as we walk walk during those times. Uh, in, maybe in a uh, you know. Uh, and as a single person, you had. Uh, you know, you had enough and more, and uh, you could you could afford a lot of things. But once you get married, once you got married, well, you see that there are responsibilities, there are expenses, um, and and so on. The expenses, if not doubled, you know, it's more more than what you could uh, do as a you know what you could spend or what you could save as a single person. So uh, the expenses are more. So in in such in such cases, then you realize that oh you know it's, it's a difficult difficulty now I I can't afford the things that I used to. You know, maybe it's a season. Right? You're not able to afford the things that you used to. You're not able to live the way you used to. You're not able to eat out the way you used to. And then um, you know so it begins to affect. You begin to look at it and say oh, oh, she's the problem or he's the problem. You know I'm not able to live the good life that I used to live um, anymore. Right. But we forget that, well, you made that wow, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. You know, it, and all, it's the same also when it comes to you know, uh, maybe the, your health, physical health, maybe your health or the other person's health. And, and that begins to affect how you live your life. You know, these are realities of life, right? Uh, maybe it, 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 it needn't be throughout your life. But it can be a season. It can be. Um, it can be. Uh, you know, for a short time, uh, for a short time period. Um, but even that puts a lot of pressure on marriage. And if we are not careful, that could begin to affect. Right. Um, there could be unmet expe expectations. <clears throat> You know, you, you thought this is how your spouse would be, or this is how married life would be, and uh, and it it doesn't turn out that way. And uh, you know, when also it could be like uh, you know, before you got married, um, all those small small differences, all those small differences, all those minor things. Um, you thought, okay, we can just brush that. It's okay, brush that past, and we can we can go beyond that. But now. Uh, you know, you maybe you you thought it would not become a problem, but now it is. These are major things. These are like mountains, and no matter how much how many try, times you try to, you know, uh, address that or talk about it, but it's still there. It's not gone away, and you know, you you just want to give up on marriage itself, right? 
<clears throat> so the thing is, um, you know, these are some realities. Or maybe there's uh, there's verbal violence, there's domestic, physical violence and abuse uh, in a marriage. Now these are things that we don't even, you know, you don't wish for, you don't desire. And you, when we get married, we we we, you know, it, it's not something that you have in mind. Uh, and these are things that you <clears throat> that you think it will not happen to us, right? But um, you know, maybe things change. Maybe um, certain things uh, contributed to it. It could be an addiction. Maybe we left an open door for the enemy to walk in. Maybe it was just a work of the flesh, and uh, and all these things. You know, there's anger and rage, and <clears throat> and there's abuse and and violence and um, and uh, unforgiveness and hatred, and then more violence and so on. And 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 yes, you know, couples find themselves in such situations, and then. And then on the verge of giving up, okay, um, not wanting to really overcome, but wanting to give up, okay. Now, uh, other things could be abandonment. You know, one of them just abandoning, not taking up responsibilities, um, either as a wife or a husband, um, just leaving everything and saying, okay, I've had enough. I, or, you know, just living the good life, you know, just saying, okay, you take care of everything. I'm just going to come and go. You know, I'm just going to come. I'm just going to be there. I'm just going to just float through. Um, <clears throat> this is how it is. Or it could also be unfaithfulness. You know, somebody is unfaithful. There's an affair. There's a uh, you know, there's a relationship, extra marital relationship. Um, trust is broken. Um, there's adultery, and um, well, there's unfaithfulness. So how does one do? How does one you know, face those things? So we see that in all these kinds of scenarios right, that could happen, right? Uh, we say, okay, I'm a believer; it will never happen. Have, you know, the other person is a believer. My spouse is a believer; that could never happen. No, no. I'm just saying that in case it happens, if you know it happens, um, the Word of God <clears throat> says that you are an overcomer. Right, the the scripture that we read and we prayed, we said, okay, none of these things can separate us from the love of God. So if it does not separate us from you, separate us, um, separate you from the love of God, which means that God is with you, and with Him working in us, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Right. Um, if you look at one John chapter five, uh, this is. Okay, 1 John chapter 5 and uh, verse 1, verse 4, you know, these are uh, scriptures on uh, how we are overcomers, how we have received overcoming ability because of Christ. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. Okay, then we go down to verse 4. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Okay. So uh, if you read the message, every person who believes that Jesus is, in fact, the Messiah is God begotten, born of God. If we love the one who conceives the child, we'll surely love the child who was conceived. Every God begotten person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. Okay, so um, it's a very encouraging again, the fact that we are overcomers, right? the fact that uh, we are just because we are born of God, we overcome the world because we carry, you know, the we carry the overcoming ability within us. And what really enables us to overcome the world is our faith. Our faith in Him, our faith in His Word, our faith, um, the, the faith that we have knowing that He is with us, knowing that He is the overcomer. So we are overcomers. Right? Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse uh, uh, 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Okay, just listen to those words. Who always leads us in triumph in Christ 
and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Okay, now, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, and Paul is writing from a lot of experience there. Uh, he has experienced hardships and he has experienced the victories, right? So, uh, so it, it comes from a lot of um, uh, experience and having experienced the victory and the hardships. And this is what he writes. He says, um, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Okay, so in the midst of those situations in a marriage, we can say, we can boldly say that, yes, God will lead us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuse the knowledge of his will, his knowledge in every place. And so there is, we'll overcome, we will come through, and there is purpose after we come through. So there is a mission, there is a responsibility that he will diffuse his knowledge through us. Right. So don't let the past or your present dictate your future. Okay. Many times we affect the past. I mean, we let the past affect our present. And we let our present situations and circumstances dictate how our future should be, how our future is shaped. We don't have to. We don't have to. We can. We can. We can take a hold of, uh, take a hold of who we are. Who take a take a hold of who God is, what He has promised, and what He what He declares over us, over us. The truth that He declares over us as our declaration. We can take hold of that and not just be passive and not just, you know, just let go of things and let the past affect our present. Right? Or uh, things that are happening right now um, affect our future. You know, see, there, there are certain things that are, that cannot be reversed. Right? Maybe, maybe there was unfaithfulness. Now there's no reversing it. It happened. You know, it's a it's a it's a thing that happened. Uh, maybe there was a you know death of a spouse or passing away. Now these are things that that have happened, very painful. But we can we can move, we can go ahead. Why? Because God has a plan and purpose, and we can fulfill uh, the destiny, the plan, purpose that God has for us. Okay, despite all these things that have happened you know we can we can go on to fulfill the destiny that god has for us so uh, despite what is happening in the present you know we we can go on we don't have to become a prisoner of the past right so so th these are some things that to keep in mind to overcome a challenge is not necessarily to reverse the situation so which means you know will things come back to normal in that scenario right maybe there was a can we can it be like you know it never happened well we, we cannot reverse it it happened but we can triumph over that we can go past that uh, because we are overcomers it says whatever is born of god overcomes the world right now these are things that happen in the world so as a married couple or uh, even as you know as a spouse uh, who goes through this you can overcome okay but there are there are certain things that we need to keep in mind uh, in order to overcome in order to not become a prisoner of the past right? in order to not, not lose uh, lose out on what god has for us right? in order to not lose that grip on the plans the purposes uh, uh, that god has for us here are some things, practical things to, to keep in mind. Okay. The first thing is to guard our heart. Okay. So as a couple, you know, as a spouse, uh, and also as single people, you know, uh, who will be married one day, you know, just these are good things to, these are, these are very important things, not just good, very important things um, to keep in mind, right? Indispensable things to keep in mind, say, okay, these are some, some things, tools that I require. And I'm going to keep it close to my heart. So one of the first thing is to guard your heart. Okay, Proverbs 4, verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence, which means to, to guard it. Keep, it means to guard with all diligence. 
okay for out of it issues the sp spring the issues of life so what does that mean that means that you know what comes out of our, out of our heart um what flows out of our heart because god puts certain things in us revelation understanding um, everything he puts in us now so what flows out is very important right so but if we kind of cut away that flow of god putting things in our heart then uh, you know, we are not really guarding our heart. Or if we allow um, certain things to creep in into our minds, um, like unforgiveness, right, or unbelief, or, um, um, you know, th these are big things, right, and even, un uh, even bitterness, um, and having a cynical attitude. Um, so, and all kind of negativity, a pessimistic attitude. It's it's very easy to slip into that if we don't guard our hearts. Right? Um, so we need to guard. You know, sometimes we are temperamentally that way. You know, we we normally just think about the negative things. Okay, uh, maybe that's how we grew up. Right? We 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 think of the negatives. You know, what if this goes wrong? You know, what if this does not happen? Uh, you know, we always see the see life as uh, you know as a glass half empty right? and not half filled right? there's a difference right uh, you can look at a glass and send you can look at a glass of water and say okay it is half filled or half empty um so no matter what we need to guard our heart maybe you're saying uh, temperamentally this is how it was uh, this is how i grew up and then we can change Right. So we need to guard our heart, keep our heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Now it's going to dictate how you live, your motive, your attitude, your outlook. Everything uh, is going to change right? if we don't keep or guard our heart. Okay. So how do we do that? How do we guard our heart? Uh, Okay, uh, so how do we do that? Two things. By always keeping God's word in our heart, meaning what he has spoken. What he has already spoken, what he is speaking in, uh, what he's speaking, sorry, what he is speaking in the present, keep it in our heart, meaning you protect that. Right? You keep it in front of your eyes all the time, meaning you make an intentional you know, we make an intentional effort to see, okay, this is what God has spoken. This is what has happened, but this is what God has spoken. Okay, so I'm going to go with what God has spoken. This is what, you know, maybe because of wrong choices, maybe because of, uh, you know, certain things that happened. You know, we don't know. Uh, maybe because of others' decisions, maybe because of our own poor decisions, uh, our own, you know, um, unrighteous actions, etc. Now, these things have happened, but I'm going to go with God's word. I'm going to keep God's word uh, uh, in front of me. I'm going to guard what God has put in my heart. Okay, so I'm going to keep my heart on God. I'm going to keep my eyes on His word. Okay, and and the other thing, very important thing, is proactively release any kind of, you know negativeness negative uh, things that are creeping into our hearts release it right if it's uh, if it's so much of is gripped by unforgiveness just release that unforgiveness uh, how do we do that by releasing forgiveness right forgive that person so release all those hurts don't carry them with you so it's it's good you know at the end of the day we do it you know we just keep short accounts you know just reflect on what has happened at the end of the day um, i'm talking about you know uh, in the marriage and say okay okay this is what happened during the day uh, you know we had these arguments we had these things and um, these hurtful words were spoken uh, you know about me over me by my spouse but i'm going to just release forgiveness I'm not going to carry it into the night. I'm not going to carry it over to the next day. But I'm going to just going to release. Right. So, um, you know, just like uh, resolving conflicts, you know, the first step was to just to you know spend time in prayer, just to get into the presence of God, and saying, God, 
acknowledging you know what has happened and to release all those hurts right so um that's the first that's the thing important thing um to do right and uh, the third thing is to focus on solutions focus on you know how can i change this right how can i remedy this whole thing uh, how can i go beyond this right so so start thinking about that and not meditating or staying on what has happened, the hurt that has happened, the, you know, the tragedy that has happened. Of course, it will take time, right? Uh, but we're going to receive healing and 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 to make an effort to step beyond that. Okay, so so that's the thing. You know, our perspective changes when we guard our hearts. The second thing is to um, let me just change. overcome evil with good. Okay, so evil thing has happened some negative thing has happened well uh, i feel like retaliating i feel like taking ve vengeance uh, i feel like you know uh, for all that mistrust that has happened that has resulted because of it i'm going to continue you know uh, with that mistrust or mistrust and i want to you know retaliate uh, doing some hurtful things or speaking some hurtful things okay um, now that's that's what we want to do in the natural you know that's a fleshly response romans 12 19 to 21 says this um, never take revenge but instead let god's anger do it for the scripture says i will take revenge i will pay back says the lord so let, let the in other words you know let the lord deal with that person uh, in however way he wants for the injustice that was done to us okay so um do not avenge yourselves that's the you know that's the old english uh, but rather give place to wrath for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord verse 21 do not overcome by evil but overcome evil with good okay don't let evil defeat you um, because if you're going to you know replay i mean respond with evil it's like you're allowing evil to actually conquer you right um if you if you're going to behave like how they behave towards you you know if you're going to give back uh, pay them back in what they paid back so we are actually um not conquering but we are allowing evil to conquer us just think about that for a minute right uh, it could be with your spouse or it could be with anyone else right we are allowing evil to conquer us to take over us take over our thought process take over our emotions uh, our character our nature everything you know we are allowing it's like opening the door and allowing a flood of evil to come and you know break down whatever has been built up in our lives right we are, we and we are doing that when we make a decision to go with vengeance, when we take, make a decision to um, react in anger, lash out in anger, hit out in anger, we are actually doing that. So how do we do? How do we overcome good with uh, evil with good? Well, uh, that is what we see in, um, you know, uh, in Romans 7. Um, it's uh, Romans 7. I'm sorry, not Romans 7. Um, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse um, 5 and verse 44, right? The Lord Jesus says, um, But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons, verse 45, that you may be sons of your father in heaven for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust right so that golden rule of um, you know do good to those who hate you i right? just replace that do good to those who hate you bless those who curse and pray for those who spitefully use you or persecute you you know pray do good bless um, so when we do that, we are actually overcoming. We are overcoming the evil that is trying to, you know, infiltrate us 
infiltrate our situation. We are actually closing the door um, to the to the powers of uh, darkness, to all the demons trying to get in and affect our marriage. You know, we are just closing the door, right? Um, so the, the third thing is to keep exercising our faith. Okay, don't uh, don't break down. Uh, continue to grow stronger. Now, this is the time to become strong and continue to um, you know, go stronger in in faith. Now we see several scriptures you know, where the Lord asks the disciples, you know, in the storm, or uh, especially when it, when it comes to you know, that particular instance, in the storm, in the midst of the storm, when the disciples were crying out for their lives, they you know they said, Lord. Don't you care? Our lives are in danger. The Lord turns around and asks them, you know, where is your faith? And then he speaks to the storm. So um, so don't lose. You know, we should not lose our faith. Or our faith should not diminish during these times. We should just dig into God, you know, um, and uh, and say, okay, now is the time to rise up in faith. Now is not the time to give up. Now is the time to rise up. So it's, it's to any challenge. You know, it could be economic in nature. It could be like, relational in nature, financial in nature, it could be any challenge that we might be facing. Um, you know, as a couple, uh, maybe as parents, um, you know, so uh, this is the time to rise up in faith, to exercise our faith, to go with what God is saying, uh, to be courageous. Okay. Then the next one is to take st small steps. Okay. Now, as God leads us, Psalm 23 talks about how he leads us in paths of righteousness. Right? And as he leads us, it's many times it's one step at a time, at a time, one step at a time. So we need to take those steps. Um, sometimes the way out is instant. It's just one step and we are out. Um, but sometimes it's many steps that we need to take, many small steps, and it is a path of recovery, a path of restoration. Right? And God is in both, whether it's an instantaneous one step back or it's a path of recovery, God is in it. So we go with, we go with how he's leading, take those small steps. Right? Um, Psalm 40, uh, and let me just read that Psalm 40 and verses 1 to 3 um, says, I patiently waited for the Lord and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Okay. Uh, verse 3 talks about what happened after that. But if you, if you look at verse 2, it says, the psalmist is saying, you know, he brought me out, out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, things that were pulling me down, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He strengthened my steps. You see, there were steps to be taken. Now, he had to take those steps. The psalmist had to take those steps. But the Lord was strengthening those steps. Right? But it was the psalmist who had to take those steps. It, it wasn't the, you know, the Lord wouldn't take it for the psalmist. Right? So the Lord would just direct. And uh, it is through his word. It is through his presence. He would show, shine the light. And the psalmist also talks about how the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. So the light that is shining, the wisdom, the understanding, uh, and the instruction to take maybe that one step. He'll sh shine that light. But the psalmist had to take that step. right? So we need to take those steps. But the Lord will do the work of establishing or making firm those steps. And, and even as we keep putting one feet in front of the other, these are small steps, everyday things maybe. So we're talking about all these you know, negative scenarios. It could be 
you know, maybe this unfaithfulness that has happened, which has broken down the trust. It could be some, you know, what we think is a very irreparable conflict or situation, maybe some, you know, violence that has happened and uh, or verbal abuse, physical abuse that has happened. And, you know, all these scenarios, right? So it's not just, you know, some good things, but it's, a, you know, that could be a horrible pit. That could be the miry clay. But he's saying, the son is saying, you know, the Lord brought me out. The Lord brought me out. So the Lord will bring us out as well. You know, if we would pursue him and say, okay, God, you know, I'm ready, I'm willing, and I want to step out, you know, so you show me. So um, take time, pray, be encouraged. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes, yes, uh, it could be it could even mean that um, you know especially in a situation where there's uh, there's been physical violence verbal violence and uh, you know it has happened repeatedly over a, over a period of time and then yeah maybe um, as individuals you know one needs to be separated for a season right to calm things down to let wisdom prevail to receive instruction to come to a place of being teachable and repent and then come to a place. So even during that season, just to keep taking those small steps and not go back, right? keep taking those small steps. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll stop here, take a break and uh, and then get back. Thank you.